The big question with pleural fluid is whether the patient has a transudate or an exudate. Now, the difference is that the, in a transudate, the pleura is normal, and what you're getting is excessive formation of pleural fluid by a passive transfer across from the blood. So this occurs in increased venous pressure, such as heart failure, or a low oncotic pressure of the blood, such as decreased blood protein content. These may be bilateral, but can be unilateral, and they can be associated with peripheral edema because the same mechanisms that cause pleural fluid in these patients will also be caused peripheral edema. Exudates, in contrast, the pleura is the abnormality. The problem is that the pleura is abnormal and driving fluid formation, and that occurs with ch tumor of the pleura, inflammation of the pleura, or infection. And these tend to be unilateral and won't have associated peripheral edema um, because this is a, a specific pleural abnormality. So what are the causes of pleural effusions? Well, with transudates, you can have an increased venous pressure, and that might be due to cardiac failure, mainly right sided cardiac failure, but also left sided cardi cardiac failure. Could be fluid overload. Somebody who's got renal failure uh, and they have an excess amount of fluid in the system, then you may get pleural, pleural fluid forming. And pericardial disease also causes pleural effusions and is often forgotten as a cause of these. The protein content of the blood is required for retaining fluid within the blood and with, that, with a low albumin content, you end up with, with the fluid seeping out into the pleural space, into ascites and into the peripheral uh, edema as well. So patients with very low protein content of the blood will present with pleural effusions. These include liver cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome and very rarely protein losing gut enteropathies or malabsorption. But the commonest cause there would probably be the renal and the liver problems. Exudates, in contrast, are due to abnormalities of the pleura, as I mentioned before. So these occur in tumours, and usually there's a secondary pleural metastasis, either from a lung cancer, from a breast cancer, or from a GI tract malignancy. So those are the common causes, but in fact, multiple different types of cancers can spread to the pleura to cause pleural effusions. And the presence of a pleural effusion in somebody with a known malignancy is very suggestive they're going to have metastatic disease affecting the pleura. And again, there are of primary pleural cancers as well. Actually, these are very rare in general, apart from mesothelioma, which is a primary cancer of the pleura that is associated with asbestos exposure that I've discussed in the lung oncology lecture. There are other causes of, of exudate pleural effusions. These are basically involve pleural inflammation. Probably the commonest cause might be a pulmonary embolus, where you often get small effusions formed with that. But then there are connective tissue diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, for example, uh, will often have patients with pleural effusions, and systemic lupus erythematosus is another cause of inflammatory pleural effusions. Benign asbestos effusions occur in people who've been exposed to asbestos, where the asbestos has inflamed the pleura and caused an exudative pleural effusion, but hasn't gone on to cause a mesothelioma. Occasionally, drugs can cause pleural effusions, the classic example being Pratolol. And then, actually, many exudate pleural effusions, we cannot identify the cause and are characterized as idiopathic. The last major category of exudate pleural effusions are those due to infection. This is an incredibly important category. And these occur in three main circumstances. One is a paraneumonic effusion, which is an effusion associated with pneumonia. One is a, the second is the empyema, which is a pleural infection without associated pneumonia. And the third, very important, is tuberculosis. There are a whole range of very rare causes of pleural effusions, and these include chylophorax, where you have chyle forming in the pleural space, ovarian tumors called Meigs syndrome, pancreatitis can cause inflammation of the pleura, uh, and of course trauma itself can cause leaking of blood into the pleura, and that's called a hemophorax. But those are all, in general, relatively rare or obvious diagnoses. So how do you investigate somebody with uh, a pleural infusion? Well, first off, you need to confirm there's a pleural effusion by doing a chest x-ray, and a pleural ultrasound would be also very helpful indeed. This is an ultrasound picture showing that the clearly a very black area, which is the fluid with the lung separated from the chest wall by that black area. If somebody has bilateral pleural effusions, then they're likely to be transudates just because they're bilateral. So somebody with bilateral effusions and an obvious cause for a transudate, such as known heart failure or low albumin, albumin due to nephrotic syndrome, then actually you don't need to do any further tests. The, the answer as to why the patient has pleural effusions is there. It's due to the, the cause of the transudates.